So traditionally, there are two ways of making money on stocks. Firstly, there is dividends that we receive periodically. And then, of course, there is capital gain, which is an increase in the share price. But what if I were to tell you that there is a third way and just like how you can give your house on rent, this method involves you giving your stocks on rent and earning some money from it. Kyon, chonk hai? Well, don't be surprised because in this video, we're going to learn a lot about SLBM, the stock lending and borrowing mechanism and how you can use it to make some extra money on your stocks. Let's begin. So the stock lending and borrowing mechanism is a temporary advancing of securities by a lender to a borrower for a stipulated duration and for a certain fee. Globally, this product is very popular and although it hasn't made a big impression in India, SLBM has been around for more than 10 years. In fact, this legally approved apparatus for lending and borrowing securities was created way back in 1997 when it was called the Securities Lending Scheme. Now, lending, borrowing, especially in stocks, might sound a little complicated, so let's simplify this using the crude example of a car. So during weekdays, and for most of us, the utility of a car is to drive us from home to office and then back to home. Which means when you are at work, you have absolutely no use for the vehicle and the asset is simply lying idle. But let's say a friend of yours comes with a proposal that every day he would collect the car from you after you've reached your office, he'll use it as a taxi during the day to ferry passengers, and the car will be returned back to you in the evening along with a daily rental fee. In essence, the car is now getting fully utilized, you are happy with that extra cash that you're making, your friend is earning some income as well, and this is what an SLBM does in its most simplified form. There are three main participants in any SLBM process. Firstly, there is the lender, that is the person with the shares in his or her DMAT account. Then there is the borrower who wants to use these shares on a temporary basis. And then there is the exchange whose job is to ensure that this entire transaction is happening properly and within the rules. Now, a typical SLBM process starts with the lender and the borrower registering themselves with the exchange, which generally doesn't happen directly and gets executed through stockbrokers. Step two is where the borrower and the lender mutually agree on the loan terms. So things like the tenure, the interest rate, terms and conditions, etc. Next, the borrower places a collateral for the stocks and this is again facilitated by the exchange. Then the agreed number of shares are transferred from the lender's DMAT account into the borrower's. 0.5 and at the stipulated date and per the contract terms, the borrower returns back the stocks and also pays a fee to the lender. And from this fee, the intermediary takes his brokerage, the exchange also makes some money out of it, and the remaining amount is credited to the lender's bank account. Now, anyone can borrow or lend stocks, including insurance companies, banks, short sellers, fund houses, HNIs, and even retail investors like you and me. And if we set aside the role of the exchange for just a minute, then here's how SLBM practically works. Okay, so person A owns 5,000 shares in a company and Mr. B, who is a short seller, approaches A to borrow these 5,000 shares for a period of one month. So this makes A our lender while B becomes the borrower. Now it's agreed between the two parties that A has to pay a lending fee of 1% of the value of shares, which at 100 rupees a share comes to 5 lakh rupees. On a transaction basis, the 5,000 shares move from A's DMAT account to B's, post which B decides to sell these shares at the market price of 100 rupees with the expectation that the share price would fall over the next 30 days. Now remember, A is a long-term investor and he's not bothered about a short-term fall in the share price because he thinks he has a winner which will go up 200, 300, maybe even 500 rupees in the future. Anyways, and fortunately for Mr. B, the market did what he expected and the share price dropped from 100 to 90 rupees by the end of the month. At this point, a very happy Mr. B decides to buy back the 5,000 shares at 90 rupees, yielding him a profit of 50,000 rupees. He then returns those 5,000 borrowed shares to Mr. A. He pays him the 1% lending fee on the 5 lakh principal, which comes to 5,000 rupees. And this leaves Mr. B with a net profit of 45,000 rupees. So A made money, B made money, and everyone's happy. Now, once Kunal was done explaining me this concept of SLBM, my first question to him was, why do we have SLBM in the first place? And surprisingly, there were a number of answers to this ranging from the fact that it improves market liquidity, which is good for all stock market participants. SLBM ensures a more efficient short selling operation, which as we discovered in a previous video actually helps with price discovery. 
It also helps traders in managing risk via hedging or by obtaining exposure to certain assets without directly owning them. And from a lender's perspective, so for investors like you and me, it is a great way to earn relatively risk-free returns on our idle stock assets. Right, so when it comes to features, here are the important ones. Firstly, in terms of tenure, an SLBM contract can be from 1 month to 12 months. For instance, we are now in August of 2023 and when we go to the NSE website and under market data we go to securities, lending and borrowing, the drop down here gives us options from September 2023 until August of 2024 which is exactly 12 months. Then in terms of the number of stocks, there are over 600 of them that qualify under the SLVM framework. This includes many A group stocks and it's a list that keeps on changing on a monthly basis and an updated one is available on the NSE website. A third feature relates to the expiry of an SLBM contract and this happens on the first Thursday of every month unlike an FNO contract whose expiry happens on the last Thursday of the month. For example, we are recording this video on the 8th of August and when I select the September 2023 contract and let's say Bata India, then it means I am ready to lend my shares from the 8th of August until the first Thursday of September, that is until the 7th of September giving this contract a 30 day tenure. However, if I was doing this transaction on say the 20th of August, then the contract tenure would have been 19 days. In this context, it is interesting to note that the highest liquidity will be available in the most recent one or two month contracts and the volumes go down rapidly as we reach month 10, 11 and 12. And finally, when it comes to the minimum order value, different brokerages have different requirements. For instance, Zerodha requires lenders to place a minimum order value of at least 1 lakh rupees per security, while borrowers should seek an order size of at least 500 shares. On the other hand, Motilal Oswal Securities and also HDFC Securities have no such limitations on the minimum lending quantity. Now remember I said the exchange is a very critical component in an SLBM transaction and that's because this entity not only validates, clears and settles a transaction but also guarantees it. You see SLBM is facilitated either by the National Securities Clearing Corporation of India which is a wholly owned subsidiary of the NSE or by the BSE owned Indian Clearing Corporation Limited. So the way this works is that a clearing corporation would act as a guarantor to the transaction which is done by asking the borrower to put up a margin of 125% of the value of the stocks borrowed. This ensures the lender is sufficiently protected but it is not exactly 100% safety as there is always the chance of a closeout risk which happens when the borrower fails to return the shares at the agreed upon time or upon demand. Now, I couldn't come across any literature on how often a closeout risk situation happens, but do ask your brokerage account relationship manager this question and do share the answer in the comments box below for everyone's benefit. Now, anyone who borrows shares has already spotted some tarkeeb in the stock market and there are typically three opportunities that a borrower chases. Firstly, there is the short selling of securities and if the borrower deduces that the price of a certain share is about to fall, then he or she can simply borrow that stock via SLBM from the lender. They can short it, wait for the price to drop. They can then buy it back, return the shares and pocket the earnings. The next technique is a stock price arbitrage and if the price of a share is different in two different exchanges, then the borrower can use an SLBM to make some quick money. And thirdly, borrowers often use an SLBM to cover their short positions in order to avoid a settlement failure. But having said this, one particular scenario is where the borrower wants to return the shares earlier and doesn't want to wait for the settlement period to finish. This is technically called a repay option and based on the current market price and if the offer matches with the pending order, then a repay order is executed, the shares will be returned and the exchange will reverse the amount of money held in the margin account back to the borrower. Now speaking of borrowing, this video borrows a lot from four freelancers who have been working tirelessly to make my content look good. Firstly, there is Kartar who ensures every beam of light that falls on this setup and every pixel on his camera is perfect. Kunal who has researched this video and has effectively taught me what SLBM is. And then of course we have Akhil and Rohit who ensure every video we create for you is brilliantly edited with the right amount of text and visuals that can help you retain more information. But now I have a fifth lender of good deeds and Fizdom has been the perfect learning partner. 
Amongst many of Wisdom's learning initiatives is Ignite, which held its first event in Mumbai last month in collaboration with the BSE Institute. The event was an opportunity to learn from India's top traders and was a glorious success with over 400 people attending it. The next Ignite is scheduled for September in the city of Jaipur and I'll certainly keep you updated of the dates and the registration details. Right, so lenders have a bunch of benefits but the primary ones most definitely include the extra income they can earn from their existing stocks, the fact that there is no counterparty risk to all this as the transactions are guaranteed by the clearing corporation, lenders are entitled to corporate actions including dividends and stock splits during the lending period, and the transactions done in the SLB segment are not treated as transfer or sale of securities which helps from a taxation perspective. So I've not covered a couple of points from this list which I'll do very soon but just like a borrower has an option of early repay, even lenders have a recourse of closing the contract earlier, which is formally called the recall option. So if a lender wants his shares earlier, then he places a recall order type with the exchange. And as soon as the offer is matched, the recall order is executed and the shares will come back to the lender. Now, a popular and obvious question is around the rate of interest that SLBM offers. And for calculating this, we need to know the lending and the borrowing rates. So for this, and if you're a lender, just go to the SLB page that I referred to earlier in the video, then pick the loan tenure and let's say you want to lend for a month. So we look at the September 2023 contracts and here you will see series A and series B and individuals should opt for series B. Okay, now notice this, we have a list of stocks where certain quantities and prices are listed. For example, there is Bata India where a borrower is ready to pay 8 rupees a share for 116 shares. Likewise, Ramco Cements has an offer of 2 rupees 50 paise. The lending fee for a Kofort share is 5 rupees and so on and so forth. Now we need to focus on the price because that's the return a lender would make. So let's go back to Bata India and the closing share price on the 8th of August is 1,756 rupees. Now 8 rupees divided by 1756 comes to 0.46%, which means the annualized yield, that is 0.46% multiplied by 365 days, divided by the tenure of 30 days gives us an yield of 5.4%. So that's an extra 5.4% that a lender of Bata India shares can earn on top of the dividends and the capital appreciation that the shareholder is anyway entitled to. In fact, when I pulled out the available one month SLB opportunities, the median yield came to about 1.5%, but I have a feeling depending on how the market situation is, this yield number can be a lot higher for some stocks at some points in time. And for this reason, I think it's probably a better use of your time if you work with a stockbroker's relationship manager who can provide you with a list of opportunities as and when it happens. Corporate action refers to anything else that happens to your shares other than the change in prices. Now remember, you are a long-term investor and irrespective of you lending your shares, you are still the owners of those shares and are therefore entitled to dividends, bonuses, buybacks, etc. So here's what happens. In the case of bonus issue, rights issue and buyback, the open SLB positions will be foreclosed and the exchange will handle the return of shares and the pro rata application of the lending fees. On the other hand, in the case of dividends, the lender doesn't have to do anything and the exchange will recover the money from the borrower and transfer the same to the lender's savings account. And finally, when a stock split happens, again, it's the exchange that will adjust the quantity and transfer the shares to the lender's DMAT account. Let's start with the charges and as per current norms, there are no STT charges, that is the securities transaction tax. There are no SEBI turnover charges, no stamp duty and no transaction charges on any SLB trades as per my understanding. With regards to taxation, when shares move from one DMAT account to another, it's not tagged as a transfer or a sale, which means no capital gain tax is payable. On the contrary, because the lender gets a lending fee, so this is more of an income from other sources and it eventually gets added to the lender's taxable income and is taxed as per one's income tax slab. In terms of commission, again, there is no uniformity and different brokerages have a different rate structure. For instance, Zerodha seems to be charging 20%, while Kotak Securities and also HDFC Securities is at 15% of the lending fees. So going back to the Bata India example, the lending fee on one share was 8 rupees, which means at 10,000 shares, 
no brokerage will be paid on the actual value of the transaction which comes to 1.75 crores but instead brokerage would be paid on the 80,000 rupees that the lender will earn as lending fees. So in this particular scenario the lender will earn a net fee of 65,840 rupees after deducting a commission of say 15% and also a GST of 18%. This balance amount will then be credited to the lender's savings account after expiry of the SLB contract and this is almost everything you'll need to know about giving your stocks on rent. So I hope you found this session useful and informative. If you're interested in participating in the SLB segment then I think most brokerages do allow for it and since all of it is offline it means you have to call up your relationship manager and figure things out. Once again thank you for your time. Do subscribe to my channel, do like this video, share it with others and I'll see you three days from now. Until then.